loved ones, good evening and bless you wherever you are. This is Bishop Clement Amokwesini coming your way with restful living, a life worth living. And I'm so glad to uh, be inspiring, I mean, a lot of people and encouraging a lot of people to trust God because restful living is about learning how to trust God and rest in His promises and to do your bit and ask God to use the little you do, yes, and to multiply it and increase it. And hey, it's, it's all about God working through you to do his will. And it's, it's, it's amazing and unbelievable what happens when you are restful. And that's why I've taken upon myself to be sharing secrets on restful living. And we're talking about the effects of restful living, the effects of restful living. If you live restfully, what are some of the effects? What are some of the benefits of restful living? Now, let me tell you this. Jesus himself said, one of the main reasons why Jesus wants us to come to him or give our lives to him is for this same reason, rest. He said, come unto me, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And learn of me, learn of me, and you shall find rest for your souls. Rest is needed for your souls. And it's amazing when you are restful, what you can achieve. There are certain effects, certain benefits that really, really um, becomes a blessing to you when you are restful. So that's what we're sharing so far. And... I'm excited and keep sharing, keep right now, keep sharing, connect your friends, let them watch and be blessed by, by these truth, uh, truths and these wisdom nuggets that come your way. I'm excited to be coming your way and I trust that I've been a blessing to you so far and this is God, God doing all these things and releasing people from their stress. You don't have to live stressfully. Stressful living can kill, and its effect is sicknesses, high blood pressure, and all manner, all manner of diseases can come out when you are stressful. But when you are restful, the benefits are innumerable, and these are some of the things I'm sharing with you, all right? The effects of restful living or the benefits of restful living is unbelievable. I mean, it's, unbe it's amazing. And I'm enjoying it myself, you know. So there we want to continue. And you see the blessing we want to continue. But before we do that, you know that, hey, we have to speak to our Father in heaven. So he can give us the wisdom and the understanding of his word. Isn't it a blessing? So wherever you are, bow down your heads. Let's pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. We bless you. Thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. Thank you that, Lord, you are always blessing us and revealing truth to us. I pray that whoever is hearing me today will be blessed. Whoever is hearing me today will come out of said any shackle, yes, any bondage in the name of Jesus. Whoever is hearing will have a blessing that comes through restful living in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, last week, we were considering and looking at David's son, Solomon. I mean, God has said, I want to read the story. God has said to David, uh, you can't build me a house. David had in his heart to build a temple for God. But God said, you have lived a very uh, war, warlike life. And that means there's blood so much, so much blood in your hand, on your hands. And so you can't build me a house. You can't build me a temple. And that should let you know that those who are in war and warfare, I told you last week, cannot build because you can't build in war. You know, I have a saying that I say. I think it just, the thought just came to me. Serendipity, not, not serendipity, serenity produces uh, a fruitfulness. I think that's the way I say it. I say it, I have a way of saying it, you see? Because you can build when you are in war. I've never seen any country building at the same time fighting. 
It's the same with our souls. When your soul is in war, your soul is worried and troubled and you're thinking throughout and wondering about your security in the future and all that you can build anything. It's, um, it's, 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 it's impossible to build. All right. So I want you to know that productivity is in peace. Peace will make you productive. Restfulness will make you productive. Get it. And labor to be restful. Fight that, that kind of fight to be restful. Yes, God says we should labor. If there's any laboring we have to labor, labor to ensure that there is peace, serenity in our spirit and our souls. And then we can think through things properly. We can do things, you know, effortlessly because our trust is in God who is working through us. Wow, it's a blessing. I want to re-echo the blessing that came with rest when Solomon was being given the charge. The Solomon in the Bible was being given the charge by his father David as to why God wants him to build and then we connect it to what he himself testified to King Hiram. So I might be repeating something and then I give you uh, another scripture which affirms what I'm, I'm talking about. So listen to me, loved one. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. All right? So in, <clears throat> excuse me, First Chronicles chapter 22 and from verse 5, we find David summoned all the elders before his departure, all the elders, and as it were, like trying to pass on his legacy to his son David, and before them, he, he, before the elders and all the princes and all, he started just telling them about the assignment he was handing over to Solomon to accomplish because God had not allowed him, as it were, to build a temple for his glory. Every one of you must have a temple in your heart to do for his glory. But you can only build a temple, a cathedral, in your, that is in your heart. Last week, I asked some of you if you have anything in your heart to do for God. And if God is to scan your heart, what will he see? If God is to scan your heart, what will he see? Is he going to see something that is going to bring glory to his name? Or is he going to see something else? Well, that's for you to answer. But with this one, David had a temple in his heart to build for God. And then he was not allowed to, to build. So this is what he said before the elders and his son Solomon. From verse 5, in 1 Chronicles 22, from verse 5 to 10, he said, Now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest. <laughs> and I will give him rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon. For I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name. And he shall be my son and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now this is what we find David telling Solomon and all the elders that Solomon means a man of rest. Solomon means rest. Solomon means rest. And God said I was going to give Solomon in his days a rest and peace and quietness in the days, in those days. And that is what is going to enable him to build. And what we can glean from this truth is that, hey, you can only be productive when you are restful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You can only be productive when you are restful. 
when you are restful, you rest in God, then you can think through and be productive. That's what I see. And that's the experience that David is saying here. Because David was a bloody man, in quotes. He was bloody. He had blood on his hands. And, you know, and what have you? God said, you can't build for me. Those of you who fight and those of you who have inward inner fightings and not only that and you maybe quarrel, you have never found anyone who is quarreling with everybody, build something substantial. I'm yet to find out. All right. So learn this truth, loved one. Learn this truth. Glean from this truth. Understand that rest will bring productivity. That's one benefit. Rest will bring productivity. Rest will help you to build, to build, to, to build things, you know, to build your life, to build your business, to build what have you. Anything that is worth building can be found when you are restful, can be done when you are restful. So I want you to get that. It's very, very, very important. And so this, it came to pass that David died and handed over his legacy to Solomon, his son, to build this temple. And Solomon w wrote a letter to King Hiram, who was David's friend. King Hiram of Tai, a, 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 a country called Tai, uh, and, and requested, I think, uh, requested for, for, for wood to build God's house. And then this is what he also told uh, Hiram. And I want us to read it, King Hiram. I want us to read it in, in 1 Kings, 1 Kings and chapter 5. And from verse, verse uh, let's read verse, uh, from verse 3 or something. All right, or maybe from verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 5. We read from verse 1. That makes it more clear. Now Hiram, king of Ty, sent his servants to Solomon because he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always loved David. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, this is Solomon's testimony to Hiram, or Hiram, you know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord, his God, because of the wars which were fought against him on every side, until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. But now... The Lord my God has given me rest. On every side, there is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. And behold, I purpose to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord spoke to my father David, saying, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, he will build the house for my name. So we see here, Solomon affirming the fact that now he is building this house and that the Lord indeed, what he spoke to his father David had come to pass and the Lord indeed had given him rest round about. So now he was going to build a house. So it's a confirmation to let you understand, to let you know, loved one, that when you are restful, you can build. That's number one. When you are restful, rest, restfulness, Increases productivity, pre peace and tranquility. <laughs> brings productivity. Tranquility brings productivity or tranquility breeds productivity. When there is peace, when there is a rest, you, have, you can do more. That is the secret in this. And I want you to get it. When you are restful, you do more. The second thing is that it's amazing and unbelievable how rest keeps your enemies at bay. Rest keeps, there's something about <clears throat> rest and you can connect rest to peace, tranquility. All these, it's, it's all the products or, or the ramifications of rest, peace, tranquility. Um, um, yes, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting for, for you to understand? It's interesting, isn't it? That how can peace, I mean, I asked myself, how can peace, how can the enemy fear peace? Wow. Now, let's consider that, loved one. 
<laughs> it's getting interesting. <laughs> How can the enemy fear peace? And I looked through scripture and I realized that the enemy is really scared of peace. Peace, not the absence of war, but I'm talking of the peace that passes all understanding. The peace of God that passes knowledge, that goes beyond knowledge. When it's inside of you, the enemy fears. Do you know the Bible says in Romans, and I, I hope I can just get this quickly for you, in Romans, that, that Paul said to the Roman church that the very God of peace will bruise Satan. Oh my goodness. The very God of peace will bruise Satan. Will, <laughs> the very God of peace will bruise Satan. Now Paul the apostle said that. And I was looking at Psalm 23. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And no doubt the enemy cannot come close to you. Now I'm connecting this to what Solomon said. Solomon said, now there's no adversary. God has given me rest round about. And now there's no adversary, no evil occurring. Ooh. So what makes the enemy fear peace? So that the, God also said, the very God of peace, we'll go that into details next week, that the very God of peace shall bruise Satan and uh, will bruise Satan shortly. That's what the apostle Paul, the very God of peace will bruise Satan shortly. God has given me rest round about peace, very God of peace, bruise Satan. So in peace, you can keep the enemy at bay. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, enemy is afraid of peace, the devil. Another word for adversary is Satan. Satan is afraid of a restful person. My goodness, get it? Oh yeah, we've been taught, our theology has taught us to constantly be warring, isn't it? And that when we get our, uh, our scriptures, we start fighting the enemy in prayer. Shaka ba 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 ba, shaka ba ba ba. We fight and fight and fight. We speak God's word. We we do all that. The, listen, listen, child of God. Listen. In the art of warfare, there are different strategies to def defeat the enemy. Yes. So sometimes it's not prayer alone because sometimes that's why when. The, these men of God in the Bible, anytime like David, before he goes to war, he inquired of God how to go about what's the strategy to fight. You don't just use the same strategy on the Amalekites, on something, on, some, on the Philistines. Because God is not the one with God. God wants to tell us that in all the battles, there are different kinds of battles with different strategies and different approaches. And so you have to hear me and know what I know will defeat your enemy. And I'm here to tell you that it's not only prayer that defeats the enemy, but you can, we have people who are restless and they are praying in restlessness. Praying restlessness is not effective, child of God. You don't get results when you are living emotionally in balance. Emotionally, you are afraid. You, you're afraid of the future and you're praying against the enemy. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. Sit down, let the Lord prepare a table before you and chill out and trust him that, hey, as the mountains are run about Jerusalem, so the Lord is run about his people. That's what he said. That's what he said. That a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but they shall not come near you. And only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. How can you, how do you see the reward of the wicked? When you are restful, and you are saying, God, you take charge. He said, this battle is not yours. You don't need to fight in this battle. I believe in the God who sometimes say you don't need to fight. There is a time to fight, but there's a time to rest and see him do it. When you trust in his promises, my goodness. Hey, and when you can say, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? You can say that in the face of sitting down and just chilling out in his promises. It's called restful living. It's called restful living, child of God. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, so, so you don't just recite Psalm 23. Take your time. Take your time. That restfulness is a, is a, is a, is a weapon of warfare. The very God of peace shall bruise Satan shortly. 
<laughs> and the peace of God that passes all understanding. Let me tell you, yes, Solomon said, let's go back. Solomon said, the Lord has given me rest round about, all round rest, and that there's no evil occurrence, there is no adversary. Satan finds it difficult to come close to a restful person. Why? Because such a person has taken the position, a posture of trusting God, knowing that he is more God conscious, more than enemy conscious. Be more God conscious, Christ consciousness, Jesus consciousness, more than witches consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. When the enemy is aware and feels that you are afraid of him, that's when he strikes because he knows you are afraid of him, okay? But when you are conscious that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I mean, somebody will be there saying that, <laughs> Bishop, it's, it's much easier, easier said than done. I know what you're talking about. I know. I know that sometimes when things get tough, sometimes you can fret, but quickly run back to the secret place of the Most High, and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If there's any running you have to do, it's not to run away from the enemy, but run into the shelter. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the shelter of the Almighty. And are you getting it? That's where God begins to fight your battles for you. That's where you say, I trust you. You are the one who made me. You know my days. You know my beginning from my ending. You know, you know, and you, you quote all those scriptures. That is living in rest. Living in rest, trusting his word and knowing that what he has said, he will do. And he gives you rest. If there's anything at all, you must learn to rest in him and see him fight your battles for you. My goodness. Now, there is a man in the Bible called Job. I mean, behind the scenes, when you read the, we read the book of Job, we realize that behind the scenes was an enemy trying to strike him. And God was boasting about his servant Job. <laughs> uh, uh, and God knew, and you know, with all the descriptions, uh, which we're going to go into maybe more next week, in all the descriptions, you know, it, it, seemed, it, it, it portrayed that God had made a hedge run about Job, a hedge. There's a spiritual hedge around God's people, around their business, around their home. You can read the number of hedges that is around the business. And Satan himself testified that Job loves you, God, because you have made a hedge around him. You have made a hedge of a hedge is a protection, a wall of protection around about him. But he says, you allow me just one chance to strike him and he's going to catch you. And looking through the scripture, you wonder, how come? that God should permit, you know, Satan to go and just test Job. Yes, God allowed Satan to do that, but he knew that Job would come on top because of the hedge run about him. Job would be conscious about the hedge run about him. But no, one of the secrets we have discovered, I have personally discovered, was that Job broke the hedge that was run about him. Job had a protection, and what is this protection? What can really bring a gap in a wall that the Lord has put round about you? What actually bring a gap? And Job gave us a clue and a secret to what happened that made the serpent to bite him. Now, we're going to look at that more next week. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. All right? But I'll give you the secret, and then we'll take our time to start going through. I mean, people have a lot of theologies and a lot of um, explanations about Job. But let's, let's, the best way for hermeneutics, hermeneutics, you know, when you hear the word hermeneutics, is just the interpreting of scriptures. Hermeneutics is let the Bible answer. Let scriptures answer scriptures. Is the best way to interpret scripture, all right? Okay, so we find that Job gave a clue as to how the enemy got to him. The enemy got to him. In Job chapter 3 and 25, we see Job making this confession. <laughs> Job said, he said, <laughs> 
for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Oh my goodness. I was not in safety, verse 26, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Job is giving us a clue how the, as to how the, the, the enemy get, got to him. My goodness, he was not in rest, he was not in quietness, tranquility, and he was not in safety. That's what he said. But hang on, God has said, I've made a hedge run about him. So you, we are the ones who, who create a gap in the protection that God has given to us to preserve us from the wicked one through our fear, through our restlessness. I was not in rest. That's what Joe said. I was not in rest and trouble came. I was not in rest and trouble came. I was not quiet and so trouble came. The moment you lose your rest, trouble comes. Listen to me, loved one. Oh, mama, mama. Listen to me. You lose your rest, trouble comes. You lose your rest, the enemy strikes. Solomon said, God has given me rest round about, and there's no adversary or evil occurrence. There was no evil occurrence in Solomon's time because of rest. There shouldn't be any evil occurrence in your time because you are, so when the enemy even strikes because of the rest run about you, he comes in one way, the Bible says he'll flee in seven ways. Rest doesn't mean you will not be attacked. Yes, you will be attacked, but rest means you have the area to yourself and you'll be in charge and you'll be in control that when the enemy strikes, you don't even feel it. Oh my goodness, it's exciting. Enemy can strike, but because you are in rest, you have dominion over. When the storm run about you and you have rest inside of you, you can speak to the storm like Jesus spoke to the storm and say, peace be still. You can't speak peace when there's no peace inside of you. That's what I'm talking about. And peace has a way of crushing the enemy. Rest has a way of crushing the enemy. And I'm going to get into that next week. How rest can crush the enemy. That will be a benefit of rest. And that's what I'm sharing with you, child of God, that stay in rest. Stay in rest. Rest. Trust God's promises. Rest. Trust God's promises that whatever he has said, he will perform. Yeah. Can you trust his timing is another word. Can you trust his timing? Can you trust God's timing that you are still in rest and all the days of your appointed time, will you wait till your change comes? Are you going to wait? Will you be able to rest and chill out and say, my change will definitely come? And whilst you trust his promises and take steps and keep walking and keep walking in his promises and keep walking and keep watching and keep, my goodness, it will be his word against the storms of life. Jesus told the disciples, go to the other side. I'll cut you up. But the storms came, but he's given his word. And you'll be, I'm giving you a word of rest right now. Storms come, will you still keep that rest with you like Jesus kept his rest and slept in the boat and go to the other side? My goodness, I'm speaking to someone. You're going to get to the other side. Every promise that God has said, the destiny that God has set for you will come to pass in the name of Jesus. May that, that promise that you've been holding on to come to pass in your life. In Jesus' name, I speak to that situation that it won't be long, you will see it no more. I speak to that sickness that now it goes, now. But don't be afraid of that sickness. Don't let it even escalate and let, let you think that it's going to be a terminal disease. Someone is there thinking like that, that it seems this thing is terminal. You are afraid. No, don't give the enemy chance to eat into your soul and your spirit to put fear inside of you. Trust God. He has said, by his stripes, you were healed. 
He, yes, he has said he sent forth his word to heal you and to deliver you from your destructions. That's God Almighty. And you can trust that word and rest on that word that God sent forth his word to heal you and to deliver you from your destructions. Glory to God. That's what it means to live in rest. That what he has said he will do and he will perform. May that, th those promises come to pass. In Jesus' name, I knock them in your life. I pray and I shatter every darkness. Hey, may he prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Someone wants to put you to shame. Somebody has risen. People who are working around the clock spiritually and throwing arrows and darts against you. They shall all fall because you are in rest. There will not be any evil or current or adversary. I speak to you and I prophesy that to you in the name of Jesus, that you keep your rest. Be strong and keep your rest. Stand fast. Stand in your rest. Stand in the promises. All right? In the name of Jesus and glory to God. You have a testimony soon to share to the glory of God. And I pray for you and I bless your house and I bless the work of your hands in the name of Jesus as God has said. May God open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give rain in his season and to bless all the work of your hands in the name of Jesus. I call it done. Let it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, so soon I have to sign off. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, glory to God. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Glory to God. He will perform it. He will perform it. Join me next week and let's go through this Job thing and just glean some secrets there for you to know that if you are not in rest, the enemy can just easily come to your territory and just take over your life. May that not be your story in Jesus' name. And well, I never have to, I have to close. I have to just sign off now. I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus if you haven't done that, for that is the best and greatest miracle. That's the first step into rest that Jesus said you will experience. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I have you laid in, and I will give you rest. Pray this prayer with me, and it will happen right now. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I receive Jesus into my life to be my Lord, my Savior, my leader, my healer, my forgiver. Wash me with your blood. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus died and rose again the third day for my justification. I'm a child of God, and I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, loved one, if you have prayed this prayer, let's hear. Let's help you. We can help you in your spiritual growth. The Bible says you have experienced spiritual birth. You're born again. That's what it means. You're born again. And you're born into a family. So go look for a church. Get a Bible. Look for a church. Well, if you think you don't know of any church, you can be in our church with Victory Bible Church International. And you go on our website www.vbci.org.uk and click on branches and see if there's any branch closest to you and join for we are one family but in different locations and so I want you to do if not find a Bible believing church closest to you get a Bible and start your spiritual journey God bless you let's hear from you and God bless you and bless your household from there from from now on you are going to journey with God and have a breakthrough in your life and so many things are going to happen in your life. So I want to leave you with these words that the rest of your days will be the best of your days. God bless you. See you next week. Shalom.